1893, at the University of Alicante, a Spanish microbiologist by the name of Francisco Mojica discovered that there were small repeat sequences present in archaea that matched repeat sequences found in bacteriophages. Mojica initially speculated that these repeats helped segregate plasmids and chromosomes during replication, but he soon realized that these repeats signified something far greater. The clustered, regularly interspaced, short palindromic repeat, or CRISPR system, was a bacterial immune system that was meant to thwart viral DNA and RNA from reinfecting bacteria cells. A bit later in 2005, French researcher Alexander Bolotin found that the CRISPR array coded for a previously undiscovered protein named Cas9 that could cleave double-stranded DNA. In bacteria, CRISPR works in three stages. When a lysogenic bacteriophage first affects a host, bacteria incorporates the phage DNA into a part of the genome known as the CRISPR array. The CRISPR array is composed of the repeat sequences that Mojica first discovered, separated by spacers. This initial exposure is analogous to a human receiving a vaccine. When the bacteriophage tries to infect the cell again, the cell transcribes CRISPR RNA, or CRRNA, from the aforementioned spacer sequences which guide Cas proteins to destroy the viral DNA. Continuing the vaccine analogy, the CRRNA guiding the Cas proteins to the viral DNA is the bacterial equivalent to how B cells that are activated by antigens commit the antigen to memory before destroying the pathogen with antibodies. But we've only been talking about a handful of bacterial species that possess the CRISPR system thus far. How is any of this research relevant for humans or for any non-bacterial species? Two major discoveries were made in the early 2010s that overhauled the image of CRISPR from a niche microbiology subject to a major gene editing tool. First was the discovery that Cas9 could be engineered to specifically induce a double-stranded break in DNA via a complementary piece of RNA known as the single guide RNA, or sgRNA, which is target-specific cRNA fused to a larger trans-activating crRNA, known as tracer RNA. The second was the discovery that CRISPR-Cas9 could be applied to eukaryotic systems, as the Cas9 proteins from Streptococcus thermophilus were found to be programmable to cleave DNA from mouse and human cells. Together, these findings have resulted in the modern CRISPR revolution, what was once a virtually unknown field of study has burgeoned into a science popularized by movies like Dwayne Johnson's Rampage and the exponentially growing number of papers published year by year on the topic. So without further ado, let's take a look at the kinds of CRISPR research currently being applied to humans. One of CRISPR's major uses in medicine is screening the genome to better understand diseases. Forward genetics is the process of finding the genotype that causes a specific phenotype that has been made possible recently thanks to the advent of genetic engineering. Conventionally, mutations are induced to genes and the ensuing phenotypes are observed and linked to the specific changes made to the genes. The difficulty lies in inducing modifications that are specific enough and achieving a large enough sample size to have an accurate data set. CRISPR makes it possible to easily induce and observe specific modifications to the genome at once by transfecting the cells in vitro before screening and lysing them to get a readout of their genetic information. This allows researchers to define poorly understood oncogenes like BRCA1 by breaking them down into their essential components and non-essential components before compiling the data they acquire from said genetic screens to design better targeted cancer therapies. A second possible usage currently in development is genetically modifying the immune system to be better equipped to fight diseases, such as genetically engineering T-cells of myeloma patients to fight cancer. Researchers at the University of Pennsylvania have started the first clinically approved CRISPR gene modification trials to test NYESO1 redirected autologous T-cells with CRISPR-edited endogenous TCR NPD1 on myeloma, melanoma, and sarcoma patients. The study aims to acquire patient samples of T-cells ex vivo and using CRISPR, insert a gene that programs the cell to attack cancerous cells and delete PD-1, a gene that impedes treatment by weakening the immune system. Though the completion of this study is still years away, this is groundbreaking progress for the utilization of CRISPR in medicine. However, CRISPR is not without its limitations. The whole premise of CRISPR is creating double-stranded breaks in the DNA that the DNA repair system fixes, and thus the effect of CRISPR is largely dependent on how efficiently the DNA repair system repairs its breaks. Though CRISPR is very efficient in inducing simple knockout and knock-in mutations, introducing complex mutations is much more difficult. 
CRISPR can suffer from a lack of specificity due to unintended modifications like random additions and deletions that the DNA repair system makes, and a secondary screening process that sorts out undesirable mutants is often necessary. This makes the prospect of making complex genetic modifications to humans a very difficult and ethically challenging prospect. On the topic of ethics, CRISPR has recently been linked to controversial human embryo experiments. A Chinese researcher recently announced that he had used CRISPR to engineer HIV-resistant babies by deleting a portion of the CCR5 gene, which has been implicated in resistance to HIV infection. The problem with this experiment is that in addition to not having the proper approval to run these trials, CRISPR is not necessary to prevent the transmission of HIV from parent to child, despite the father being infected with HIV. Modern in vitro techniques allow sperm to be washed and filtered of the virus prior to insemination. The researcher claimed that he wanted to protect the children from infection later in life, but many critics view this experiment as dangerous encroachment into the field of human experimentation. If CRISPR is used carelessly as a means to simply induce genetic changes for the sake of inducing genetic changes, then there could be very dire consequences for people in countries where research ethics are not as strictly enforced as the United States. China is one such nation where technological advances surpass legislative advances, leading to the possible abuse of scientific power. Public fears of designer babies and other status symbols that could widen social stratification also loom in the background as a day when money could buy a genetically improved life seems to be coming closer and closer. But the same could have been said about nuclear power 50 years ago, or even the internet 20 years ago. CRISPR is still in its infancy as a technology, and if history is any indication, its maturation should be met with appropriate legislation and scientific regulation that will allow it to become a powerful but controlled medical tool. The future is bright for a world with CRISPR.